Hey everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. So for this video, we are doing a whole bunch of plant chores. I've got a lot of stuff I wanna do. Clean a bunch of plants. I wanna show you some new plants. I gotta build some stuff. Let's just get into it. Really big plant. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the spider mites. If you've been watching my channel, the past few videos I've made or the past many videos, I've been talking about spider mites and how I've been struggling against them and fighting this battle against the mites and have been washing off my plants all the time and it's just been really bad. It's like the worst spider mite situation I've ever had in my plant collection and it just seems like no matter what I do, I can't get rid of the spider mites. I thought that I was losing my mind over these spider mites and it turns out I'm not crazy. Well, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy because it's my entire neighborhood. My entire neighborhood is infested with spider mites. Yeah, a couple of days ago, some guys came knocking on our door to let us know that our whole neighborhood gets treated with a pesticide and wanted to know if we wanted to get in on this pest treatment pesticide spraying program. All of our neighbors on both sides and front and back and all around us all opt into this service where they get their house sprayed down with these pesticides to treat for spiders and spider mites, um, which I guess infest this neighborhood around this time of year. And this is something that happens in the summers around here. So while I would really rather not have my whole house covered in pesticides, I also really didn't wanna be the only house in my neighborhood that doesn't opt for this pest treatment because that just seemed like a really bad idea. Like all of the pests would suddenly have this nice safe place where they could be in my yard only. So we opted to go with this pesticide spraying company as they were doing the, the whole neighborhood. I mean, we could see them around in other people's yards spraying. So we signed up for this service and I got my whole house sprayed down with pesticides. So it's not just me going crazy and being unable to treat the plants in here. The mites keep coming in from outside and it actually makes me feel, well, it's a double-edged sword. In some ways I feel better, in some ways I feel worse. I feel better knowing that it's, it's not just me being unable to treat my plants and having this like spider mite infestation of the ages that is just unbeatable. It's, it's actually that they're coming in from outside and the fight that I'm fighting is a bigger battle than I had initially understood. But in some ways it's way worse because my neighborhood is infested with spider mites and it kind of means that there's like no hope for my plants. Okay, well, I shouldn't say that. But unfortunately, what I think that means for my collection is that the only way that I can fight these spider mites is by spraying my whole own collection with a bunch of pesticides. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So typically I really, really prefer to try to just use neem oil and soap and stick with things that are not harmful to my family or to my dog. Um, but this time around, I think I have to go for the pesticides because Right now my house is like this pesticide free safe haven for all these spider mites. I'm gonna try not to be bummed about it and we're going to treat some plants and hopefully this will be the solution. But before that happens, I wanna show you some of the new plants I got. I have one right here, which I see actually does have spider mites on it. I guess everything in my house has spider mites right now. But yeah, I got this little Peperomia Hope. I feel like it's really cute. Just have it sitting right here on my counter right now. This is gonna get treated today too. Um, this was from Home Depot, or no, Lowe's. This was from Lowe's. Um, let me show you the other plant I got from Lowe's. Oh, this has mites all over it too. <gasps> okay, well, this will get sprayed down. Snake plants usually aren't super affected by spider mites. They just will like live on it. But in my experience, tend to not be very affected by the mites. But yeah, I got this Sansevieria Samurai at Lowe's. I think I showed them to you in my shopping video last time and said I was gonna show you the one I got when I got home and then I forgot to do it. So here it is. It's really cute and chonky and yeah, just another snake plant for the collection. So I'm really excited to have this. This is a Sansevieria Arenbergii, uh, excuse me, Dracaena. Um, and yeah, it's got these like tan edges around the leaves and the leaves are so thick and succulent. Um, Oh, that's a big perlite. There's a perlite stuck in there. I need to go in with tweezers. I tried to grab that out with my fingers and then I shoved it. I shoved it in deeper and can't get it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a cute little Sansevieria. Yay. Okay, let's come over here. I want to show you my little turtles. Triangularis. Triangularis update. Not doing well, but these ones are doing great the little string of turtles thing. I tried putting the saran wrap on it. I put a layer of plastic wrap after I propagated it. Um, on some of the hotter days, I tried covering it up after I watered it. And then I noticed that it started to get 
moldy pretty quickly under there despite the dryness in the air so i removed the cover so we've had a little bit of dieback on this but that was to be expected um and i have been expecting it to sort of decline and get significantly worse before it then gets better because propagations do tend to do that and go on a little bit of a bender of looking pretty bad before they grow in new growth i mean it depends on the plant um but I did such a messy job when I propagated this that I knew that I was going to have a bunch of dye off in all likelihood. So I have had some dye, but I definitely also still have juicy turtles in there that are continuing to grow. So I actually want to grab this little turtle planter. I'm going to need to treat this too because everything on the first floor pretty much has spider mites. So I'm going to bring it into this bathroom and just start accumulating plants in my bathroom down here where I'm going to treat things. Okay, so I really hate using the insecticides. I have this. Um, this one, which I thought was the same chemical that they sprayed outside our house, but when I'm looking at it, I realized that it's not quite the same. It's actually a much more toxic version of the stuff that they sprayed outside. We're trying to figure out just what the mechanism of action of this chemical is. I just brought a bunch of plants in here. Peperomia prostrata and the Peperomia hope, and then the Sansevieria I showed you, plus I don't think I showed these to you yet. This is a Ficus Benjamina variegata, but it's got really bad spider mites also. Let me see if I can show you. Look, there comes one down the edge of the leaf. Oh, it just ducked under. Oh yeah, you see the mites? Do you see that disgusting layer? That's how bad the mites are. I also have this one. This is a little philodendron. Adam. It's a variety of the thematophyllum bipinatophytum, I believe, so it's technically a thematophyllum. Um, but yeah, it's related to like the philodendron hope, the um, lickety split, that one that kind of gets confused with the monstera sometimes. It's got like the big split leaves. Um, I think it also gets called split leaf philodendron. This is like a tiny variety. It was only a couple bucks at the grocery store one time, so I got it. Um, it's got some leaves that are dying off in there. I don't think this one has bad mites yet, but since it's in my house now, it probably will get them. I'm gonna treat it along with the rest of the plants. You see my, my alligator stuff back there? Wait, I'm gonna show you this bathroom real quick because we're about to spend a lot of time in here. So first we've got this little gator rug, which I think is super cute. We like the little gator. And then I've got this gator print, gator in the tub, which I think is super funny for in the bathroom. And then up there, I've got some snake plant propagations, which are the only plant that I found can stay alive in this bathroom because there's no windows in here, um, plus a random candle. And let's see. Oh, and then I've got this um, little gator dish towel here. It's like not the right type of towel, but it's got these little little crocodiles on it so I wanted to put it in here plus my little um whole amphibian theme I've got this dish the snake in it this is um Jonathan Adler and I like to keep some little folded towels here because I feel like it makes the guest bathroom just like look really like a guest bathroom somehow I don't know and then a little ring dish ah, a big spider what trying to get in on the video. Where the crap did that just come from? Okay, well the point is there's a lot of spiders, I guess, and they're just in my neighborhood. I was just trying to show you my cute little bathroom setup and some giant spider came out, like... <laughs> Somehow it's so typical. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was showing you my cute bathroom that I guess spiders also think is cute. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's continue with the plant stuff. Oh wait, this is kind of plant related. I've got this, um, my lotion, I like to put them in plant pots that match the aesthetic. That concludes the bathroom tour. The other thing I'm gonna do right now is take down the curtain before I spray. Okay, and then let's, let's talk about, let's talk about pesticides. They are not all created equal. Some are safer than others. Anytime you spray any kind of chemical, I recommend at least going on Wikipedia and just reading some stuff about it. Um, and don't just stop at the part where it says like, oh, this was once derived from a flower or something like that. There's lots of poisons and toxins and bad things that come from plants. You can read a little bit more about like the mechanism of action of, of chemicals and stuff um, and just get a sense of how bad it is. So I'm just encouraging you to do your due diligence and please read about chemicals before you spray them. Go on Wikipedia and look and see what it says about the chemical. It's um, 
whatever the active ingredient is, just Google that. If you start reading things that make you feel terrified, you maybe should be. I'm trying to put a little bit of scare in you because I think that the houseplant community is very lax with our use of random chemicals, so. I do not do this lightly. Okay, so this chemical is called permethrin and it is a synthetic version of the stuff that they sprinkled all outside my house. So what they put in my neighborhood were pyrethrins. I asked to see the list of chemicals. It's just pyrethrins, which are derived from the chrysanthemum flower. Although I kind of think that that's more trivia than relevant information because it's not a flower. It is definitely a pesticide. This product ate has a synthetic version of pyrethrins in it. It is permethrin and it is more potent and it lasts longer than the stuff that they sprayed outside. So the stuff outside, pyrethrins, P-Y-R-E, um, those degrade very rapidly in sunlight and they don't stick around for that long. So in terms of insecticides that you could be spraying broadly outdoors, um, they don't do as much damage to the bee population and don't create as much issue with toxic runoff just because it tends to degrade pretty quickly in the light. This chemical sticks around once it's exposed to light for I think it says like 50 to 70 days is what I was reading. So this is a residual. You spray this on your plants, it basically makes them toxic to any bugs that wanna to try to eat it. Um, so the way this works for insects, it acts on their sodium ion channels, which basically creates a reaction that causes them to have like muscle seizures and it paralyzes them to death. It's not pleasant, but that's how it works. So this is one of the ones that I would have to say, in my opinion, is a little bit safer than some of the other insecticides because of the way that we use this on people. This is in lice shampoo and it's in certain bug sprays and ointments. It's something that like when we absorb it, we process it very quickly and it doesn't have the same effect on people um, or dogs as it does to fish and insects. Oh, I think this is also very toxic to cats. So be careful if you're a cat owner too, just be aware of that. I'm not saying that this product is safe. If you wanna minimize contact with this, don't eat it. And I think if you get it on your skin, you might get like a rash from it. I have really sensitive skin, but there are applications on humans and dogs and mammals, farm animals that we use this for, and it's considered like an important drug by the WHO, World Health Organization. When we use it on people, we use it because it's an insect repellent or like it's an insect poison. It's not like we use it as medicine to treat ourselves. We use it to repel bugs and it's like relatively safe for people and like the absorption is not a lot, I guess, on your skin. Anyway, okay. Let's mix them up. The mixing instructions say to do one ounce per gallon. All right, got my death solution all mixed up. Annoying, I just went to go get my big pressurized spray bottle and it won't hold pressure <laughs> anymore. I haven't used it in a while. I didn't leave it full of pressure, but sometimes in my experience with some of those pressurized big pump bottles, they tend to not last super long. Maybe it's because I always buy a pretty cheap one, but I think it must have like a broken seal somewhere or something. Anyway, we're gonna use this really tiny bottle to treat all of my plants because this is the only spray bottle I have right now. Also, real quick, I just wanna show you my gigantium. I gotta take these leaves off. Um, okay. Okay, so I've got my gigantium over here and I have to show you this crazy setup. So, of course, the gigantium tried to fall over again. Um, the other day I was just sitting here at night and I noticed at some point earlier in the day that it looked like it was kind of leaning, but I thought, meh, you know, it's kind of just like leaning. And then later on, it was like at an angle, like, like, like this kind of relatively to where it is now. Let's see if I can show you more. It was like leaning pretty far over. Um, I didn't even get any pictures of it because it all happened so fast. I'm not sure if I caught it when it was actively falling, but I kind of think I did. Um, but anyway, I didn't take any pictures. I called my husband over, he held it, and I tied it in place. This plant is going to need to be repotted again because it always wants to fall over and I always keep putting it in too small of a pot. Just tied it to the stool that it's on. So I've got this, um, this is a wick, like a watering wick from a for like a LECA setup. I just had like a lot of the cord available nearby. So this was the first thing that I grabbed. I tied it 
to the stool leg back here, which also has an aerial root that I tied around it a long time ago. But yeah, it's, it's being held up by this string and then I shoved this bottle in here as an additional stabilizing element. Um, okay, I just noticed as I started showing this to you and I wobbled it around and now it looks like it's leaning the other way. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, what do I do? Okay, hang on a second. Come on, phone. Taking this root clump and putting it here and hoping that'll stabilize it. You know, that actually helps a lot. Put my bottle back. <laughs> okay, this needs way more help than I thought. I was trying to show you my, <laughs> my makeshift setup and I didn't even realize how bad it was. So I think it's stabilized for now. <sighs> okay. <laughs> flowered recently and it's got all these little bits that I want to wash off because I don't want to wash them down the drain so I have to take them outside along with my big Diffenbachia. Okay let me show you my poor Diffenbachia. It is looking really bad. It has lost most of its leaves. I've been treating it for spider mites and now I know that it's not just me but like let me show you how bad the mites are. Okay if you look in the sinus, the leaf sinus, which is like the, the crack where the leaf stem joins the leaf and there's a little divot. But the point is, do you see the spider mite? Do you see that thick webbing? To describe, you have to like find the right angle to spot spider mites. They're not visible until you look for them a lot of the times. And the infestation can be really bad and you still might not see them.
I actually feel great about this treatment because, I mean, if this doesn't work, I don't know what will. <laughs> You can see but one of the strings just popped the other day the humidity has been changing like crazy so yeah this is my philodendron maximum it has not grown any new leaves since i showed it to you it's just grown a lot of roots it fills up with algae and i kind of wash it out half-heartedly and then put it back in there other thing is i went to home goods for the first time ever oh my gosh you guys I have been missing out. I have been sleeping on home goods. People always talk about home goods and I thought it was kind of like, I don't know, like a craft store or just like kind of like a dollar store or something like that. But then my neighbor <laughs> changes out their patio furniture like very frequently and has mentioned that she's always buying her furniture at home goods. So I'm like, furniture at Home Goods? I didn't know it was a furniture store. I don't know why I'd never been to Home Goods before. Anyway, I went in for the first time and was amazed. The prices are so good in there for some of the plant stuff. There were so many plant stands at the one that I went to. Although I would have to say the vibe in Home Goods is crazy people are so competitive like i kind of feel like the store was full of pregnant ladies being very possessive over <laughs> like single nightstands um <laughs> so i was kind of just trying to stay out of people's way because i feel like there was like a very intense energy in home goods that is not normally a part of shopping experience but anyway that was my weird home goods trip but i did get this really cute plant stand that i really like oh yeah i should show you this plant too um this is a Muhlenbeckia complexa, um, an angel vine. And I honestly think that this is probably the only time you're ever gonna see it. It was fuller when I got it. I got it from the grocery store. It was like $8 um, and I picked it up just cause it was pretty cheap, but it's been dying pretty quickly cause it's dry in my house. So I've been having to water it like every day. It maybe needs a way bigger pot, um, but I've got it in this back corner over here. It's not even that close to a window and it dries up. I have to pour water in here at least every other day. So I have a feeling that at some point I'm gonna miss a watering on this and this thing is gonna just completely fall apart. Like look, at it, it's already, I don't know if you saw any of those leaves fall down, but it sheds a lot for me. But it fits really perfectly into the top tier of this planter. So that's where I have it. Oh, I should finally take this hook out. Oh my gosh, this is making such a big mess. <laughs> Shoot. <sighs> All right. I'm not sure what should go in the bottom of that because like, I think it's pretty dark down here. It's like covered. Plus I have this stand pretty far from a window shoved into a corner. So I was thinking I needed to get kind of a small snake plant that could go in there. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> this might be the perfect size. Okay, it doesn't quite fit. I need to like lift it up a little bit. Tiny plant pot to the rescue. Uh, actually, this is gonna be too big. Plant saucer to the rescue. Okay, maybe the pot again. Okay, hey, that looks... I need to take the white pot out. <laughs> Okay, I feel great about that. I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner, but I feel like that looks good in there and hopefully, wait, sorry, I'm swooping around. I'll stop swooping around, swooping for no reason. I get all excited and I start like moving my camera like this. Don't need to be doing that. Yay, I feel like that looks really good. These are the other plant stands that I got. So I used to have these two plants just like on the ground right here in my entryway, but I bought this set from Home Goods. They were, um, I left the price stickers on so you could see $14.99. But yeah, I got these two other plant stands and these plants used to just be on the ground right here, but now I put them up elevated and I feel like it looks really nice. It like matches the black edge on my mirror and some of the other details in my house. So 
Well, there's the shower curtain right now. <laughs> but yeah, this was $15 and this was 20 bucks. Tacos. Yeah. Good boy. All right, you guys, this has been a really, really great video for me. Um, I feel really accomplished. I did a lot of things that I've been needing to do. I feel really happy to have explained to you guys what the spider mite situation is and to be taking action and doing the things I need to do to fix the problem. Hopefully we can move past this and get back into some regular plant growing eventually. The neighborhood spider mites is apparently just a seasonal thing. This isn't gonna be an issue all the time, but now I know what to expect around this time of year. I would love to hear from you on what type of pests you're dealing with these days or if your plant collection is just totally pest free and is thriving and doing great. That's awesome too. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you on what plants these days are bringing you joy. You wanna say bye? Come here. Phineas wanted to make an appearance. <laughs> oh, hi baby. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that your plants are bringing you joy and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. I feel so good after eating tacos, which I didn't even clean up yet.